Last spring, it was MLB imperialism. During the fall, it was college football imperialism. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Craig Crash, and today I'm hopping into Hoopland to give you college basketball imperialism, more specifically, NCAA tournament imperialism. At its base, Hoopland is an NBA game with generic teams and rosters. But the wonderful Discord community has created a plethora of different roster files to allow for customization. That's how I'm able to use college teams in this video. I bring this up to say I am an absolute trash can because I cannot remember who created this particular roster file uh, that I'm using today, but I will include the link to this roster file as well as the Hoopland Discord in the description below. As a refresher of how this will work, here is the map of all 68 tournament teams. I used the IRL version of this exercise, otherwise known as March Madness, to dwindle the field down to 16. After that, we'll spin a pair of wheels, one to pick an attacking team, and one to pick a defending team. After that, it's simple. The winner takes the territory of the loser, and we do this until there is one team left standing. It's NCAA Tournament Imperialism, our own version of March Madness. Let's get started. No, your eyes are not deceiving you. You are looking at a map of the Sweet 16 teams from this year's NCAA tournament as imperialism videos are back in a big way on the Craig Crash channel. The first team in NCAA imperialism is going to be the number one overall seed in this year's tournament, the Houston Cougars. Who are they going to face? Houston is headed... Northeast. So Houston and Alabama will be our first matchup. Shot clock down to five. The shot is no good rebounded by Houston, but there's a foul committed by Alabama. Free throw is good. Houston now up by four. Miss. And another foul by Bama. Shot is no good. Rebounded by Houston. Now Alabama has it. Last chance for the Tide. And the shot is going to be off the mark. No good, but Houston gets the win on the road, 42-38. to Floyd Anderson is your player of the game with 8 points, 10 rebounds, and what was a defensive struggle. And Houston is moving on as they take the territory to their northeast. So, Bama is the first Final Four team to go down here. Uh, who will we see next? Uh, we're going to see North Carolina, another one seed from this year's tournament. And the Tar Heels will go directly north. And we'll get one of the best rivalries in college basketball, North Carolina and Duke. Final five seconds. The shot, it is good. It's going to be a 13-point win for North Carolina and the Tar Heels advance in NCAA Tournament Imperialism. Armando Baycott, your player of the game, he had 10 points, 12 rebounds, a double-double in the 13-point win for the Tar Heels as North Carolina claims an even bigger part of North Carolina. Road teams are 2-0 in NCAA Imperialism, so who's going to be the next attacking team? Looks like we're going to see the Volunteers of Tennessee. And Rocky Top will be headed southeast. Tennessee will travel to Clemson for the next game. The Tigers are proving that they are the superior orange team as Clemson is putting on an absolute shellacking of Tennessee right now. 51 to 23 as we are in the closing seconds of this game. Clemson doubles up Tennessee, absolutely takes the volunteers behind the woodshed. P.J. Hall is your player of the game. Uh, surprisingly enough, just six points uh, in a 60-point effort from the team as a whole. But he did have 10 assists, uh, so just facilitating the basketball up a storm out there. 39 second-half points for the Tigers. And Clemson takes over the state of Tennessee. So Clemson is the first team to defend their homestead. And next up, we are going to see NC State. A lot of ACC love early on. And the Wolf Pack will be going to the West, which means another ACC rivalry. It's NC State and North Carolina. We're in line for an epic finish here. Under 30 seconds, 
Three point North Carolina North Carolina lead. The shot is good. 40 to 39. Good. Second shot is good. 20 seconds for NC State down three to North Carolina. 12 seconds. The shot is no good. And that might have just been it. We're going to see another foul here. Misses them both. NC State calls a timeout. All right. 10 seconds. Five. Four. Three. They got to shoot a three. They're going to shoot a two. What? Well, <laughs> that was an odd enough ending. As uh, NC State needed a three, they take a two uh, at the very end of the game. Uh, and North Carolina survives. They won one on the road. They win one at home. Uh, the home team has now won two straight as the Tar Heels get the 42-39 to win over NC State. Armando Baycott is your player of the game. 10 points, 12 rebounds, a uh, double-double. And North Carolina has now knocked out both teams from their state. A quarter of the teams have been knocked out of NCAA Tournament Imperialism. The next team we're going to see is Gonzaga playing their first game. The Zags will be zagging south, meaning we're going to get Gonzaga at San Diego State for our next contest. Bulldogs need some magic here. I'm running out. 10 seconds. The shot is no good. Rebounded by Gonzaga. 3 seconds, 2 seconds. There is the buzzer, and San Diego State is your winner. Ree Sticks and Waters is your player of the game for the Aztecs as San Diego State gets the 56-51 win over Gonzaga. And the West Coast belongs to the San Diego State Aztecs. This next game will decide our top 10. Who will be on the attack? It'll be the Purdue Boilermakers. My beloved Boilermakers in the Final Four for the first time in 40 years. They're going to be going north, which means it'll be Purdue at Marquette for our next game. Final 30 seconds, Purdue with the two-point lead. The three from Marquette is no good. Rebounded by Zach Eady. Shot clock and game clock are off by just a smidge. I don't know if the AI will compensate for that or what, but Marquette seems content to let the clock wind down. Here is Edie. The shot is no good. Rebounded by Marquette. By Marquette. Ten seconds left. Seven, six, five, four, three. The shot is no good. Rebounded by Purdue, but a foul committed with a second and uh, four tenths left. The pass in. The shot long range. No good. And Purdue hangs on. To score the win, Fletcher Lawyer, your MVP, 8 points, 5 rebounds, 6 assists on the game. Purdue and Marquette in a low-scoring affair, but the Boilers get it done. They advance into the top 10 of NCAA imperialism. So there it is, the top 10 teams to make it through here in Sweet 16 imperialism. Let's keep going. Down goes Marquette. As the road team gets back on the board there. And for the second time tonight, we are going to see Houston. The Cougars will go to their east. I think the arrow points a little bit more towards Clemson than it does Illinois. So we will get Houston at Clemson in our next contest. A little over a minute and a half to play. It's 43 to 41, Houston. And Houston comes through with the shot. Jamal Sheed, the three. No good. Rebounded by Houston. 30 seconds left. Arcano, the shot. It's good. And Houston, a six point lead with under 30 seconds to play. And for the second straight game, Houston wins on the road. Javier Francis has 12 points, 8 rebounds in the win for the Cougars. 
And the stronghold for the Cougars just got a little bit bigger. Down goes Clemson. Who will we see next as we are at the halfway point? And for the first time tonight, we are going to see the Yukon Huskies. And Yukon will be headed south. Which means game one for the Huskies means traveling to North Carolina to take on the Tar Heels. Minute and a half to play. North Carolina clinging to a one-point lead. They missed the shot there, though. Davis the shot, and it is good. North Carolina back up by three. And UConn answers. Donovan Klingon. The east side of the map up for grabs. UNC up by one. The shot from Baycott. It's good. UConn's going to call a timeout. Down three. 20 seconds left. Ball with the basketball. He drives inside. 13 seconds. 12. 10. And the shot is up and good with five seconds left. Solomon Ball. We're going to see a foul here. 4.6 seconds left. UConn down by one. Two seconds. One. The shot. It's up and no good. UConn falls by one point. What a finish. A heartbreaking end for the Huskies as they are one and done. North Carolina defends their stronghold yet again. Cormac Ryan is your MVP, 11 points, 8 rebounds. What a performance. And UNC controls the east side of the map. We started with 16, now we have 8. Who will we see next? For the first time tonight, we are going to see the Arizona Wildcats. Zona will be on the defensive. Where will they be headed? They're going to go east. East from their logo means we're going to see Arizona at Creighton for our next matchup. An absolutely dominant effort by the Arizona Wildcats. They are up by 17 with a minute to play here. Now 19. 50 to 31 the score. Zona putting the finishing touches on this one. And there it is, the final buzzer. The Wildcats, led by Omar Balo and his 12.7 rebounds. They beat Creighton 50 to 31. And Arizona expands their territory. Who will we see next? Our next team up is going to be Iowa State. We see the Cyclones for the first time. ISU, where will they head? They will head south. The arrow points southeast more than anything else. So we will see Iowa State at Illinois for our next contest. In a battle for the Midwest part of the map, Iowa State says, oh, I'm going to sneak right past you here. They are going to beat Illinois pretty resoundingly. Uh, they're up by 21 with a minute 40 left to play in this one. Haven't really looked back. They've kind of dominated this whole game. And there it is, the final whistle. Iowa State absolutely trounces Illinois 52-33. to uh, Keyshawn Gilbert, 17 points, 5 rebounds in the win for the Cyclones. And in their first game of NCAA Tournament Imperialism, Iowa State acquires more land. This game will determine our top five here in NCAA Tournament Imperialism. And next up, we are going to see Houston on the defense again. Where will the Cougars head? They're going to go west. So it'll be Houston versus Arizona for a spot in the top five. Minute 40 on the clock. Six point lead for Arizona, but now that's just been trimmed to four as Houston makes it 
a four point game now. The shot is up and good. The three at the buzzer is no good. And Houston falls to Arizona. The Wildcats get the win. 46 to 40. Omar Ballo, 13 points, 12 rebounds, a double double in the win for Zona. And now the Arizona Wildcats own the biggest chunk of land on the map. So there is a look at your top five. It is North Carolina, Purdue, Iowa State, Arizona, and San Diego State. Who will come out on top? Shout out to my girlfriend, Erin, for the following transition. You want to be on top? Her suggestion. It's Final Four weekend, so uh, who's going to make our Final Four here in NCAA Tournament Imperialism? And it looks like we're going to see the Arizona Wildcats for our next game. And the Wildcats are headed west. So it'll be Arizona versus San Diego State for a spot in the Final Four. Just under two minutes to play. And we've got a tie game as it's a lay-in for San Diego State. Jock clock winding down. For San Diego State, the long two, it's good! No, that's a three, they're gonna call that one a three. I didn't think he got back in time. Drains the three. Reese sticks and waters with 13 points. Pow, the lay-in, good! The floater! There's the lay-in for Balo. And we're gonna start seeing the foul game now. Free throw is good for San Diego State. 10 seconds left. Five, four, three, two, one. The three, it's good, but it won't matter. Follow a three at the buzzer for the Wildcats. Makes it a two point game at the end. But San Diego State punches their ticket to the Final Four with a 43-41 win over Arizona. Reese Dixon Waters is your MVP. Th 13 points, 8 rebounds, 3 assists on the game. The Aztecs control the west side of the map, and they are one of the last four teams remaining. UNC, San Diego State, Iowa State, and Purdue are left. And next, we will see the Cyclones of Iowa State. Last time we saw ISU, it was a big win over Illinois. And next, they will take on SDSU. Iowa State and San Diego State will be our next game. Final minute 40, Iowa State up by one, 41 to 40. The shot is up and good. It's a three-point game now. Omaha, Bilyeu with 16 points on the night. Porter, the Cyclones of the Big 12 as Iowa State trying to take over the biggest piece of land on the map. Dixon Waters, three! He nails it. It's a two-point lead for San Diego State. Playing good. You know, we haven't had an overtime game yet. We're about due for one. 10, 9. The shot is no good. Rebounded by Iowa State again. 4, 3, 2, 1. They got to get a shot up. It is up and no good. We are headed to our first overtime game of the tournament. Let's go. Final 35 seconds of overtime here. Iowa State has scored the only five points of the extra period. As Trammell finally puts San Diego State on the board here in bonus basketball. Double overtime, anyone? 10, 9, 
Layup is good. Nine and a half seconds left. We're going to get a foul. First free throw is good for Iowa State. Second free throw is good. San Diego State needs a three ball to tie. Three, two, one. Misses the shot again with the weird, let's take a two-pointer <laughs> uh, when we need three to even tie. But Iowa State hangs on in overtime. They win 52-49. to San Diego State, a fantastic run by them, but they finally fall. Iowa State has won two games on the road now. And the Cyclones now have the most land of any team remaining on the map. There it is, a look at the map with the final three teams remaining. You've got Iowa State with by far the biggest uh, amount of land remaining on the map. Um, you've also got Purdue there in the middle with North Carolina making up the east. It's going to be interesting to see uh, who comes out on top. Cue the transition. You want to be on top? This game will determine who plays for the championship. And next, we are going to see Purdue on the attack again. Will the Boilers face Iowa State or North Carolina? It looks like they're going to be playing Iowa State. Please, for the sake of the thumbnail, let Purdue be at least in the championship. Please, they're a Final Four team for the first time in 40 years. And they're the only team left in NCAA Tournament Imperialism that's actually still alive in the actual tournament. Please let Purdue win this game. Thank you. Iowa State has looked dominant at times. They finally got to defend their home stand for the first time all tournament, but Purdue has been lights out tonight. They lead by 15 here in the closing minutes of this one. Uh, they've been pretty much in control from the opening tip. Uh, they led by a ton early in the first half. They lead by 15 now. Um, last 30 seconds of this one. And Purdue is going to be headed to the championship game against North Carolina. There's the final whistle. People are going to say it's rigged because when I did MLB Imperialism, the Cubs won it all. Uh, and now I'm doing NCAA Tournament Imperialism and uh, Purdue is in the championship game. Look, I promise you, Ball State lost MAC Imperialism. Purdue lost Big Ten Imperialism when I did college football. I promise you, it is not rigged. The Boilers get the 51-34 win over Iowa State. Zach Eady, your MVP, 15 points, 9 rebounds in the win. I had a 3 in the game, an absolutely dominant effort by Purdue. They led 29-12 after the first half, and even second half, uh, the Boilers advanced to play North Carolina. So there it is, the final two teams left, Purdue and North Carolina. That is what the map looks like. Honestly, very aesthetically pleasing. I like the Purdue colors there. I like, I've like. i always liked the North Carolina blue. Um, it's going to be a fun matchup. Uh, let's, let's dive right in. Let's see who gets to be the home team. The wheel decides home court advantage for the championship game. And Purdue will have to be on the defense for the third game in their run as North Carolina will get home court advantage. Let's hop right into the championship. Purdue versus North Carolina for supremacy here in NCAA Tournament Imperialism. Two teams that were one seeds in this year's tournament. Five minutes left to play here in NCAA Tournament Imperialism Purdue with the six-point lead, 38-32. to 32. The shot is up and good. It's a four-point game. Jalen Washington. You need the hook shot. Got it! Hook shot is good. Hook shot is good. Two minutes and 40 seconds to play in this one. Purdue now only clinging on to a two-point lead, and they missed that shot. North Carolina rebounds, and they've got an opportunity to tie this one. Driving all the way down is Washington, and he connects. We're tied. 
The shot is no good. The putback is good from RJ Davis. Hook shot is good for Morton. Under a minute to play between Purdue and North Carolina. Braden Smith backing down in the lane. He shoots and he scores. Braden Smith gives Purdue the lead. The three ball is good from Cormac Ryan. What a shot to give the Tar Heels the lead again. Edie is good. One point lead for the Boilers. Ingram. The shot. It's up. No good. Rebounded by Gillis, but he's fouled. Another foul here. Gonna send Braden Smith to the line. Misses the first free throw. Second free throw. Misses! Oh, but we get a foul! This, this time, Zach Eadie's gonna go to the line. No time elapsed. Another missed free throw for Eadie! Hit one. Come on, man. Oh my god, they missed the ball, but Gillis, Gillis missed the shot! Gillis got the rebound, missed the lay-in. And North Carolina's got a chance here. The fallaway shot, no good. Rebounded by Ingram, he's got three, he's got two. Loose ball, rebounded by Smith. We got a shooting foul there. He's going to get three shots by Smith. I got caught up. I know it wasn't a rebound uh, on that when he got loose ball there. As Brayden Smith knocks down that free throw, what a crazy sequence of events that was. Brayden Smith is going to get three free throws. Wow. That was a shooting foul. He literally did chuck the ball three quarters of the court. Timeout, North Carolina. Two seconds. The shot for the win. No good, and Purdue is your winner of NCAA Tournament Imperialism. They win 47-45. to Zach Eady, your MVP, 19 points, 13 rebounds. What an absolute crazy game, an amazing finish. What a way to conclude this tournament. Wow, uh, uh, an unreal sequence of events where you had... One, you had Brayden Smith go to the line. He misses both free throws. Zach Eady gets the rebound. He's fouled. Then he misses both free throws. Gillis gets the rebound. Misses the putback. North Carolina can't connect on their shot. Brayden Smith collects the loose ball. Chucks a three-quarters of the court shot. <laughs> Gets to shoot three free throws. Only hits one of them. North Carolina gets two seconds to chuck up a three at the end of the game. They miss. Man, what an unreal way to end that game. What an unreal way to end that tournament. Wow. Craziness. That was a lot of fun. The final map always looks so scuffed, but there it is. The final map draped in the colors of the Purdue Boilermakers who went on the road to beat Marquette, on the road to beat Iowa State, and then finally on the road to beat North Carolina to become your NCAA Tournament Imperialism Champions. What an amazing run they had. Uh, what an amazing tournament it was. A lot of twists and turns along the way, uh, like we always see uh, in these uh, imperialism videos. Uh, people are going to say it's rigged. Uh, like I said, um, you know, the Cubs won the MLB one I did. Uh, the Purdue wins this one. But hey, look, hey, my teams, my teams can't win in real life. Give me this one. Give me this one, all right? But as always, that was a whole heck of a lot of fun, and I do appreciate you all taking that ride with me. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you leave it a like, subscribe. If you are new, tell somebody that you love them, and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Peace out.